And good morning, it's Wednesday morning, and today we read Matthew 22, 41 through 46. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question, saying, What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. And Jesus said to them, Well, how is it then that David in the Spirit calls him Lord? saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. So here Jesus turns it back on the Pharisees and asks them a difficult question. He's had enough of them asking him these questions, and he says, hey, whose son is the Pharisee? Who is, who is the Messiah? And they say, well, the son of David. And he says, well, then why does David in some psalm call him my Lord? If, David's, if, if he's David's son, how is he David's Lord? And if you're confused, that's part of Jesus' point. Um, but the point Jesus makes is that um, he's eternal. The son is eternal. And so um, even David recognized that uh, he was Lord, even if he didn't understand Trinitarian theology the way we all do. He, he, you know, he, he kind of knew these things a little bit. He says, you know, the Lord, God said to my Lord. And, and so, so what David sees is is that there's um there's something else going on than just a descendant uh, and the same thing happens um then as we look at how jesus uses this to confound these pharisees and no one will ask him any more questions so we can't we can't you know this guy stop he's 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 above our pay grade he's beyond us we don't know what he's talking about so we're just going to let him alone um and they do uh and this is one of those places where jesus has put up with their questions and then he turns him turns turns around and asks them a difficult question um kind of puts it back on them says well explain this to me and they can't and they don't and so um they basically then back off and leave him alone, which is maybe what his agenda was, but he also wanted to prove something to them, I think. Uh, as we go ahead and read in the Gospel of Matthew, we'll see that um, he has some strong words for these Pharisees in the next chapter, but um, for now, he's managed to sort of shut them up, and um, and so that's part of his agenda here is in Holy Week, you know, and, and it, we're coming closer to his trial and his arrest, his arrest and his trial and his crucifixion. We're getting close to that. And he's he's seeing the conflict get stronger. He's not really trying to make a conflict, but he's just see, seeing it happen and he's not afraid of it. Um, and so um, it begins to, to fester and it's going to boil over here in a couple of more chapters. But we're not there yet, and so we'll keep reading. Um, we'll keep doing this. It's uh, it's cold out there today. It's kind of damp, and I hope that you're having a great day. Uh, and we will see you tomorrow.